What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who classic review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 6th Doctor Colin Baker story, Revelation of the Daleks. This is the 6th Doctor's only Dalek story, so I was quite interested to see what it'd be like. It is of course another Davros story as well, because basically from Genesis onwards they were all Davros stories in the classic era, which, you know, is cool in some ways, but in other ways it's kind of like, mm, okay, Davros, you're kind of, you're coming back and going all the time, it gets a bit ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I was interested to see what this one would be like. I have seen it before, but I couldn't really remember anything anything about it, so this is basically me going into this one for the first time really. So anyway, this is Revelation of the Daleks by Eric Saywood. The Doctor and Perry arrive on the planet Necros, home of Tranquil Repos, a funeral home for the galaxy's elite. But is this the Doctor's own final resting place, and why do the Daleks guard the inner sanctums of the perpetually interred? Perhaps the great healer will have the answers. A nice little short plot synopsis on the back of the DVD there, with a lot of words that really almost tripped me up. I had to record that one a couple of times to finally get it going, but um, yeah, there we go. Revelation of the Daleks, the only Dalek story from the Sixth Doctor's era. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the cast. All right, so Colin Baker is the Sixth Doctor. He's pretty good in this one. I mean, you know, I've said it a lot. I've said it in my previous um, Sixth Doctor reviews. I'm not the biggest fan of the Sixth Doctor. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of his era, even now. Um, I've actually only this is the fourth story I've reviewed of his. I've actually only seen these four stories I've reviewed so far. That's all I've seen of him um, thus far. So um, yeah, I mean, I've still got a little bit to go, but um, I'm just he's so he's okay at points. He's really good. When his moments with Davros in this one, pretty much like any Doctor with Davros, really really good. It's probably the best part of the story, um, but. I don't really like him with Perry, from what I've seen. Um, he's, he's. I don't understand why Perry stays with him in a lot of ways. So that gets us on to Nicola Bryant as well as Perry. Um, Perry, I just don't understand why she stays with the Doctor, with this Doctor. Such a big difference to the fifth Doctor. And just every time I've seen him, he's always been really mean and rude towards Perry. And it just, it just makes me wonder, why are you staying with him? Why, why, why are you doing this? So that is a bit annoying, so yeah, the Doctor does annoy me in that aspect, but he also does have some funny moments, and he does also have just some decent serious moments, but all in all, Colin Baker's decent in this, but he's nothing special, and I mean, Nicola Bright's the same for me personally, because I don't like, because I don't get why Perry sticks around with the Sixth Doctor, why she puts up with all this shit all the time, she's just kind of, uh, whatever, gets annoyed, but she just, I don't know, she just, it just seems really strange, She's also quite whiny, um, so yeah, Perry's, I don't hate Perry, don't get me wrong, I don't hate the Six Doctor either, but um, yeah, Perry isn't my favourite companion either, she's okay in this, but yeah, just nothing that special in my opinion. Alright, so let's get on to the good and the bad, starting off with the good. Jobel is the same actor who plays Mr. Copper in Voyage of the Damned. I thought that was pretty cool, um, I did actually know about this previously, um, Clive Swift, who sadly passed away only a couple of months ago I think, played Professor Jobel in this, he also plays Mr. Copper in Voyage of the Damned, which is a 10th Doctor story, um, yeah, I just, I think that's pretty cool, you know, you can definitely tell it's him, he has the same voice, same accent and everything, and he does look pretty similar to, of course, quite a bit younger, but um, yeah, I just, I thought that was quite interesting, I thought I'd jot it down, um, also, kind of on the same vein as that, when we're talking about, you know, comparisons to the new series. Now, I, I understand these, I'm saying these are good things, but they're not really, you know, this is only in hindsight of what happened many years later. I just thought I'd jot these things down. This one especially, the music when Perry is with the DJ is also used, I believe, in the Doctor Dances. You know, the Empty Child Doctor Dances, when the Doctor and, um, um, when is it? Is it when... He's trying to, when the Ninth Doctor's like, uh, just a second Rose, I'm trying to resonate concrete here. Is that when that song plays? Because there's a song in this one, you can hear it in the background when uh, Perry's with the DJ, and it sounded exactly the same as the song from um, from the Doctor Dances or Empty Child. I'm pretty sure it's Doctor Dances when he's resonating the concrete. Either that or it's when they are, they're dancing in the TARDIS right at the end of the Doctor Dances. It might actually be the same song for both of them, I can't remember. I think it is actually, yeah. Cause they say this is, you know, this is our song or whatever. So I thought that was, I just thought that was, I just heard the song in the background and I thought, hey, that's, I, I've heard that before. And when I, you know, thought about it, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know if, you know, they brought it back in the Doctor Dances because of it was in this episode. Probably not. It's probably just a coincidence. But um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. The transparent Daleks look pretty cool. I do quite like the design of the transparent Daleks. They are just a Dalek 
but they're transparent and they've got they've basically got a person in them because um, Davros was trying to basically um, basically mutate humans into Daleks um, something that we, I guess we see later on in the new series you know with Daleks in Manhattan and stuff um, but yeah it kind of happens here as well I thought that was interesting you know Davros is obviously pretty much on the verge of you know death he keeps on getting defeated and he just he wants his Daleks to reign victorious of course he's also got the other Daleks is it the renegade Daleks to deal with as well from they were in I believe resurrection they appear at the end of this one and then they move on into revelation as well um, yeah I just I mean this whole almost all the three Dalek stories from the fifth sixth and seventh doctors it's almost like a trilogy um, you know, they all begin with R as well, and they, it's all about, you know, these renegade Daleks and Davros's Daleks, um, and yeah, I just, I, but he's trying to make these, he's ma making humans, or whether they're actually humans or not, I don't know, they're the people on the planet Necros, trying to make them into Daleks, and yeah, he basically puts them inside these clear Dalek cages, um, casings, and yeah, they look pretty cool, they're very underused, we only see a couple, we only literally see two, one of them gets blown up, the other one, we basically, the Doctor just sees for a split moment, I think, and then it's kind of gone. So it would have been nice to actually see them doing some stuff, but I thought the design of them was pretty cool. The only other good thing I can really talk about here is the Doctor and Davros talking, which I, you know, briefly mentioned before. Um, pretty much every time any Doctor, whether it was Tom Baker in Genesis of the Daleks, Peter Davison in Resurrection, um, Colin Baker in Revelation here, uh, uh, Sylvester McCoy in... Um, in Remembrance, you've got, you know, David Tennant in Stolen Earth Journey's End, and you've got Peter Capaldi in Magician's Apprentice, which is familiar. No matter who, what actor, um, or maybe soon-to-be actress, is playing the Doctor opposite Davros, they're always really good. They're some of the best scenes. Um, and that is the case here. I just think when the Doctor finally does, you know, come face-to-face -face with Davros, he has some really good dialogue scenes, some of the best dialogue in Doctor Who when Doctor and Davros are talking. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really good. It does take quite a long time to get to that point, though. So that brings us on to the bad stuff. Alright, I'm sure a lot of people would have been expecting this one. The DJ, he's ridiculously annoying. I've pretty much heard, because like I said, I have seen this episode before, but quite a while ago, and I couldn't remember anything from it. couldn't remember the DJ at all. But I had heard people saying, oh god, I was so happy when, spoilers, the DJ gets killed um, and I was thinking what is with this DJ I'm not joking literally five minutes into the episode when we'd seen him quite a lot because he appears quite a lot at the start of this story I was sick of him straight away he was super annoying he was just oh, it was he was just so annoying I just I didn't see the point of having him there I mean I kind of get why he was there why he was a part of the story but it just why him he was just super annoying got on my nerves really quickly and yeah I, I was happy when he died as well um, there's quite a lot of poor acting in this episode which brings it down quite a bit the DJ I guess is one of them I don't think his acting was too bad he was a bit too over the top I think but I don't necessarily think he was a bad actor um, there was the girl was it Kara I don't know which I'm looking at the names here I don't know which names were which basically the the um, the woman you know dressed in blue who um, ended up, well, she liked uh, Professor Jobel, and she also got um, taken to see Davros, um, and then she ended up getting exterminated in the end. Um, I, I didn't think she was a great actress. I thought the way she delivered her lines, especially towards the start, when she um, yelled, at, um, yelled at a couple of the, the guards or whatever they were, saying, you know, when uh, people were roaming through um, the tunnels or whatever they were doing, you know, those two people, um, she was like, go and find them, and she, it was just a really poor delivery, um, just didn't really seem like she had the greatest acting ability, in my opinion, so that was quite off-putting, especially considering she was a fairly, um, you know, central point of the story, so that was pretty off-putting. There were also a couple of less notable characters who I didn't think were great on the acting department. The Daleks were too easily defeated by guns. Now, there's a whole thing, and I mean, this is more in the new series than the classic series, I get that, but there's always been a thing. No matter what, the Daleks are killing machines, and they're pretty difficult to kill. You've got to aim for the Ice Stork to blind them, and then you do what you do from there. But in this episode, there's a lot of just people shooting with what I imagine are just normal guns. There's only a couple of, like, you know, laser guns. There's people shooting with just normal guns. 
and they just blow up a Dalek and it just dies and it's like well I just don't how how can you you can't kill a Dalek that that easily it just doesn't seem right to me um, and above that as well the Daleks just don't really do much in this story once again this is perhaps a bit more of a Davros focused story again but um the Daleks really just don't do anything at all in this story they're actually pretty useless they they exterminate a couple of people, they don't even say much, they're just kind of there, so that's a bit disappointing. And then the final thing I want to say, it took ages for the Doctor to find out about the Daleks and Davros. Yeah, it was literally like a little bit into part two, and remember this is only a two part story, they're like 45 minute parts each. It was only a bit into part two when the Doctor finally realised that this was the Daleks, it was even further towards 15-20 minutes before the end of the episode, if even that. Um, when he figured that Davros was here as well. So um, yeah, it was pretty slow at times because the Doctor and Perry were literally just walking around for most of part one and a bit of part two as well. So Revelation of the Daleks, what did I think about it? Well, I'm going to be honest, I'm actually a little bit disappointed. I wasn't expecting amazingness from this, you know. Um, of course, the two Dalek stories beside these, um, you know, next to these, Resurrection, which is pretty good, I gave an 8 out of 10, I quite enjoyed that one, and then Remembrance, which I love, and I gave a 10 out of 10, probably my favourite Dalek story of the classic series, even beating out Genesis, possibly, it's right there with it anyway, um, this one really does stand out as being the worst of the three, and to be honest, the worst of all the classic Dalek stories I've seen so far, I'm going to give Revelation of the Daleks a 5 out of 10, um, yeah, I just, I was pretty disappointed, you know, it took a bit too long for the action to come in, the Daleks weren't very useful and prominent at all, um, there was some pretty bad acting in there, there was some annoying acting from the DJ, um, and then finally, when we did get to the end, I thought the resolution was maybe a little bit rushed, and yeah, it just... It just didn't really, I mean, it's not terrible, but it didn't really pique my interest that much. So yeah, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Go check out my Twitter, link is in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.